Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited, and this is just a quick video to show off a couple of interesting Irish innovations, starting with this. Some of you may have seen a video I posted three months ago about my Garrow Priority Unit, which is a rather spiffing device for allowing two high current loads to be split, such as if you have a house with two electric showers that your intake fuse is ordinarily too puny to support. This device allows the operation of only one shower at a time to ensure the maximum demand of the installation is not exceeded. In my case I have an electric shower and an electric car charge point so this is a rather neat solution to ensure the shower is available at any time and that the car charger cannot be used when the shower is operative. As I said in that previous video there are other means of guaranteeing two high load appliances cannot be used simultaneously such as a timer or changeover switch but this Garrow device provides a fully automated solution and it works rather well. The only disadvantage I saw with the device was that it was in plastic and so did not comply with the requirements for 17th edition Amendment 3, which ridiculously requires domestic switch gear to now be housed in steel enclosures, something not adopted in Ireland where these priority units are more popular because of the larger number of 63 amp services there. I did say in that video that I thought Garrow were missing a trick, both by not having an Amendment 3 version of this product and by not targeting it at those who want to use it in the way I'm using it, that is, between an electric shower and a vehicle charger. Well, guess what we've got on page 67 of June's Professional Electrician magazine? New priority and non-priority boards, compliant with 18th edition, works with showers and EV charging installations? Marvellous! Now I'd love to think that I was an industry influencer, but this isn't the result of my YouTube ranting and I'm indebted to Garrow for contacting me a few weeks ago to say that they did provide this product in a steel enclosure. So that's me failing to check my facts once again, but here it is, so let's take a peek inside. Let's flip the old lid and we have here a Type A RCBO, so I'm just going to zoom back out and we'll have this apart here. Uh, yeah, we have a type, ACR, type A RCBO, which is interesting as Garrow tell me that they've been using Type A for years. If you don't know about your RCD types, Type AC is what you'll find in most consumer units to date. However, they're rapidly falling out of favour because DC current getting into them can stop them from working. Uh, so uh, probably best not to use these sort of things with things like vehicle chargers perhaps. For more information on DC in AC RCDs, point your browser at the E5 channel where the dream team of Paul Meenan and John Maud definitely demonstrates just why AC are out and type A or B are now the big noise in additional protection and why the manufacturers are all switching over to them. Uh, the video is linked in the description by the way. Uh, another thing to note about this uh, RCBO is its dual width form factor. Last month I uploaded a video about a contactum RCD which on the face of it look to me like an RCBO because of the B25 designation on the front. In fact here is said device. When it, uh, although it's got that B25 on the front, uh, a closer look at the BSEN number confirmed it was a device to BSEN 61008 and not 61009, therefore it provided no overcurrent protection. Some commenters on that video said the dual width form factor was a dead giveaway, but I'm told this dual width form factor is popular in Europe for RCBOs. And this Garrow model uh, is to BSEN 61009, therefore when it says B40 on the front we know it's a B curve rated at 40 amp for overcurrent protection as well as providing additional protection of up to 30 milliamps of leakage current unlike this rogue contactum which says B25 but is not a B curve and provides no overcurrent protection. Naughty naughty. Okay. Uh, also in here we have the 6 amp control MCB, the current sensing relay uh, and the contactor. I won't go into too much detail about the operation of this as it's all in the previous video linked to in the description. The part code for this unit is GM6-PS and garrow.co.uk is the place to point your pointer if you're in the market for one. There is one other thing shipped over from the Emerald Isle to show you here today. A real of 2.5 mil twin and earth. Really David, you knob? What's so great about that? You may well ask. And it's more expensive than a real I would have bought from my local wholesaler. <laughs> and uh, it's rather heavier too, this 100 meter reel clocking in at 15 kilos compared to the 12 kilos of a locally sourced spool according to my admittedly uncalibrated uh, bathroom scales which are more used to weighing the wife's ass than reels of cable. Uh, so what's this Irish stuff got that the uh, that we're lacking in the local uh, local cable here? 
Let's have a closer look inside here, shall we? And we can see, if I strip it back a bit, that the CPC is sleeved throughout. Look at that, isn't that great? Uh, you know, I, I would gladly pay more for Twin and Earth with a sleeved CPC if it meant no more messing around with bloody earth sleeving, which is damnable stuff, especially when you're up a ladder and you keep dropping it. it. It also provides better insulation resistance properties because you have that extra layer of insulation over the protective core. Uh, OK, I know some people will say that the job of this conductor is to connect together the uh, exposed conductive parts, and as they are exposed, then why bother sleeving the CPC through? Out its length but if that's the case then why do we bother buggering about with earth sleeving at all i believe north america and canada don't faff about with it i guess sleeving it at termination points provides an identification of the purpose of that conductor but you wouldn't use it for any other purpose anyway would you i mean i, I mean I, well, I suppose it's technically possible but then wanking off a dog is technically possible but you still wouldn't do it would you would you you know, I once had a reel of sleeved Twin and Earth. I can't remember why or where it was from, but uh, it was a joy to use, and I was smo when it ran out. This stuff is too pricey for me to order in all the time, and I'm not even sure if it's something recognised in the UK wiring regulations. So I'd prefer it if the reels at my local cities and eddies came this way, but I don't expect that'll happen unless there's a change in the regs. Although I expect 18th edition Amendment 1 should be out any day. Uh, I mean, the IT must be ready to charge us a few quid for new books by now. After all, they haven't had a penny of mine since last July. But hang on, a sleeve protective conductor surely can't be adding an extra three kilos to the thing. Well, no, there's one other thing to note here uh, about the CPC, and that is that it's the same cross-sectional area as the line and neutral conductor. So this is a uh, three core 2.5, it's not a 2.5, 1.5, uh, which is what you'd get in the, with its UK counterpart. Uh, it seems in 2013 that the wiring regulations in the Republic of Ireland changed to require the size of the CPC to match that of the line conductors. Over here, Twin Earth Cable is still made with a smaller diameter earth conductor to save copper, save cost, make for a more malleable cable, and because we assume all circuits are correctly designed, so that automatic disconnection of supply will occur in the event of a fault and before a big enough and sustainable enough current can heat that smaller CPC core sufficiently enough to cause trouble. Maybe the uh, lack of sleeving aids in heat dissipation and maybe the Irish requirement to sleeve the CPC is what has driven up its size. I genuinely don't know and I'm far too lazy to start googling for answers now so uh, I'll rely on those more clued in to comment below. And that's it for today. It was just a quickie. I appreciate your thoughts as always. Sorry if I don't respond to some of them. YouTube doesn't always tell me when a comment has been left. My thanks to Ian Leach for pointing out the Garrow ad in Professional Electrician, which was just timely enough to be included in this video. So uh, once again, thanks for watching.